Um, right, let's just get into it. So, other than a few, uh, hi Jordan, other than a few random weirdos, I reckon, <laughs> everybody, uh, I guess people love love if it's done correctly and if it's not too painful or if it's not too out of the ordinary. Obviously, in childhood, we can uh, form patterns of uh, like thinking and coping mechanisms that either push away or, you know, like defense of your own uh, vulnerability or hurt or stuff like that. But um, not only money makes the world go round, uh, love also has been given that honorific, as it were. Um, however, like today, love can. Uh, it can mean, uh, you know, like with uh, colloquialisms, I guess, and different meanings, it can mean just like squishy feelings or <laughs> I'm so not at home with that area. But, yeah, it can mean like, I don't know, fuzziness or unicorns or bluebirds always pop into my head. I don't know why. I think it's probably a music video. Um, it can also mean like an arousal of your emotions. It can mean uh, of, uh, people love to call me. Um, it can mean uh, like just sexual desire. I, it's still a four-letter word beginning with L, but yeah, it can be misconstrued as that. Where we see authentic um, love is, I wish these people would leave me alone. Yeah, where we see the only truly authentic love is uh, within the Trinity. So those three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have eternally and perfectly loved each other and us. Um, and there are like four, I guess, uh, overlapping maybe, or yeah, like these these are the traits. There's benevolence, there's mercy, persistence, and grace. And those are all things that we could aspire to in our own uh, loving relationships, actually. So grace, um, yeah, grace means that we are dealt with according to God's character and not our own. So our sins and our shortcomings and our ways of coping and our, like, you know, whatever it is we, you have going on, you and I, um, it's not, that's not the key deciding factor on how we're treated. And thank God, literally, because it's according to his love uh, for us and not our love for ourselves or our love for our neighbours, however you know, it could, you know, love is, it can be debased is what I'm saying, I guess, but not within, um, within those four, four traits. So to summarize, because I love a waffle, um, he loves us according to um, what we need rather than what we deserve. And can I get an amen and a hallelujah potentially? So Paul, love Paul, uh, he says in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, uh, so that no man may boast. So, yeah, on that, I guess we, we don't do the good works to become uh, children of God. We do the works because we are children of God and we allow uh, somewhat the spirit to work through us, although we can we can attain some degree of righteousness through the blood of Christ, like just in, in and of itself. So, and that includes actually like grace, us extending our grace towards others. And I'm not always uh, very graceful. I don't mean my dancing. I mean, yeah, sometimes I can uh, emotionally defend myself by uh, attacking, I guess. Like I, I got a bit of a mouth on me, as it were. I know you won't believe me. But anyway, we, we we ought to treat others gracefully, uh, sorry, graciously. And, uh, yeah, it comes back to that thing of some, some of our interactions with non-believers or just other Christians or those we love or those we want to love us or those who do love us. Um, some of those people and some of those, uh, like, analogies I just gave you or examples may only see the grace of God that day or ever within us, depending on how small the village is that you live in, I guess. But yeah, we are like bearers of God's grace and uh, yeah, we're blessed with it. And then we we uh, extrapolate that outwards, hopefully. And we, yeah, we're like an ad advertisement for the body of Christ. 
not always i'm just gonna throw it out there off my, yeah confession is a is a good thing uh brethren wise okay so benevolence uh it's it's not only um it's it's an unselfish concern so god has an unselfish concern for us his rightful um like what he demands and what he deserves is you know complete glorification um adoration worship all the good stuff but his concern for us is not based on any need at all of his like he's self-sufficient in that respect and his love is like i just uh we we were just looking at the psalms in one of my university things and and also song of song of songs and that's uh can be challenging to get your head around like it's lovely <laughs> it's very lovely the language but it yeah i guess it's a foreshadowing of the bride of christ and stuff like that but it could be a bit weird you know that seems a bit lovey dovey and a bit erotic so an unselfish concern for us and and in doing so god takes the init initiative like without sounding calvinist he pursues like our benefit he wants what is best for us he doesn't really need to wait um like to respond to things in us other than free will if we are like wordlessly crying out god can uh, move in in our hearts and in our minds and moses says in deuteronomy 7 7 to 8 the lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples but because the lord loved you and that's obviously a pluralistic you and he loves us for what he is as opposed to what he needs or what he can get and and with human love yeah i think there's an element uh, of what do we need from the other person and, and yeah it's not really what they think of us it's what we think of ourselves in their presence and whether that like edifies us or, or makes us better people kind of thing not my area of expertise i might just reiterate that one so uh because of his benevolence towards us we should make best efforts to love others in the same way actively seeking their benefit i think that's a nice yeah that's a nice concept and a nice thing to do um mercy now we uh, think of god's compassion uh, towards the needy and that is us so whereas uh, like grace uh, responds somewhat to our guilt our conviction um, mercy responds to our misery or our despondency because once you see once you even glimpse for a second the magnitude of god's grace towards us is so humbling that you can just be despondent <laughs> you can be like oh no you know if you're not good at uh, receiving good things or i don't know like it's it's a mahusive compliment as it were it's like a it's a thank the lord kind of moment so as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And I'd just like to add this Psalm 103, 13. This fear is not fear as in, you know, feeling a bit sick and shaking and adrenaline. This is more in line uh, theologically and linguistically with awe, like reverence, respect, etc. cetera. Uh, God does not desire that we are fearful of him or afraid of him. So as the benefactors of uh, this mercy, uh, like it's not a surprise really, we should or we ought to display, uh, like treat others mercifully if, if um, you know, when relevant. Um, and that could be like strangers, friends, families, anybody. So we are the most common channel uh, through which God's mercy flows out into humanity and that's like quite a big responsibility if we were doing it by an effort of our own will because <laughs> i'd be falling on my uh, backside very regularly well it doesn't take me long to like get my uh, stuff in order but then it can get set off again with this like the righteous indignation and the, all the the twaddle so without our expression of his mercy like some i won't say many but yeah some would uh would just not see it in the course of their lives and that's such a shame because people like on the whole are quite lovely um just as long as they're far away <laughs> i'm joking while they're doing it persistence we're nearly there now persistence refers to his patience like his just in my case alone his unending patience the patient patience the like 
it must be so frustrating. It must be so frustrating. I don't, I mean, I was going to say, I don't know how he copes, but he's pretty big in the game. So um, I think he's fine. Uh, yeah, he continues, he continually, and this is the great thing because we are all sinners and we will all stumble and we will fall. There's no point in trying to talk yourself into like, I won't ever fall anyhow, anyway again, because that's not real life. And that's not even like working out your salvation. Um, it's, it, you know, God is desirous of a willing heart in us as opposed to a perfect uh, scorecard um, because then he gets to offer us his mercy and his grace all over again. So it's like transactional and it's, um, it's another display of love. So he continually restrains his judgment and his wrath and his indignation and his like uh, dis not discomfort i don't know like in human terms his uh unwillingness to accept sin within his presence after everything he's done to sort it out it is a bit of a cheek when you think of it and we couldn't approach him metaphorically or spiritually without the blood of christ so if you're not in christ get in christ i don't know how to yeah i'm obviously not an evangelist so you, O oh Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And that's Psalm 86, 15. And also, is it 1 Corinthians? Yeah, the definitional of love. Like, I love that, I, literally. Uh, love is slow to anger. It keeps no record of wrongs. It, You know, all of the good stuff. So Peter... Um, yeah, Peter suggests that we forgive seven times. Uh, however, Jesus was quicker on the uptake, as it were, and he knew not many people were good at maths. So he said, <laughs> not seven times, but up to 70 multiplied by seven. And I guess he assumes that people would just go, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> and like keep doing it because uh, it is a lot. And if my maths isn't wrong, it's uh, what, 490? Wow. I don't, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section. So, and that was Matthew 18, 22, by the way. He didn't mean on the 491st time, like, just go, ah, oh, do you know what? Get out of here. Like, I, like, you know, talk to the hand. I guess he, like, I guess, I know in my heart, but I, I, like, academically, I guess he meant just continue onward. Um, You know like an infinite number of times because God forgives us an infinite, um, an infinite number of times. And also so overlooked, but we will not be forgiven if we do not forgive. Like that's set in, in stone. So um, like <sighs> very important uh, in order to be merciful and gracious and, you know, yeah, all of that stuff. We, if we're holding grudges against other, and if we, Actually, I see Bill, and that just reminded me, you're right, Bill, um, of like what, what I just put into the comment section in as much as love towards ourselves. So God deems it right, and like if God says it, it is truth, and God uh, desires that none should perish. God loves us enough whilst we are in our most sinful, most uh hell facing <laughs> most uh like despicable in terms of the law god loves us at that moment perfect he loves us at all moments perfectly but enough to die for us enough to incarnate and die you know and all of the associated insults and injury um yeah that's the point that he loves us enough he he does he never loves us any less he, he can't love us anymore not can't but perfect love implies a pinnacle like you cannot have more perfect than perfect. You cannot have less perfect than perfect. Otherwise, it's not perfect anymore. And God most certainly is perfect and all of his attributes are also. So our forgiveness needs to be, I won't say quick, but timely, um, used in a timely fashion and repeatedly for those who need it, not those who merit it because we're not the arbors. We must forgive, like, especially our brothers and sisters. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, growing up in London, it's sometimes, uh, you know, kindness can be perceived as weakness, I guess. And people can, uh, like, exploit that. But they're, they're only exploiting themselves in terms of their relationship with an all-loving God. So true love 
I'm going to come back to what I was talking about with Will. Yeah, actually, yeah, he loves us that much. And therefore, if we don't love ourselves, um, like a, a power reflection of that, we are kind of implying. And also, when we don't forgive others, we are implying that we know something God doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Like someone else loves my Jesus and I love my Jesus. How can I not love them? Because otherwise I'm like assuming that I, Jesus loves them. So I'm going to go like, well, Jesus, actually, you just didn't realize this bit. And I like, I've got the skinny on it and I'll don't be ridiculous. Okay. So true love uh, of the, of the kind that the Lord has agape doesn't, it doesn't place ourselves at the center. Um, which is good in terms of other forms of love, which can leave you like off balance and maybe a little insecure and I don't know, vulnerable, like if that's one of your aversions also. So it follows the model set down as it were by God from, you know, first by us loving God and then like, you know, so it goes up to the Lord and then it, it filters out into like everybody, the whole demographic of like uh, friends, neighbors, enemies, you know, you name it, you love them. We'll try to so once we are blessed with the fruit of the spirit that is love in a very real sense i guess we are not doing the loving we are being we are having we are facilitated by by god's perfect love flowing like as a, we are the channel or we could be the channel of that in other people's lives so we can love others in order to be a blessing to them rather than what we receive from them in um in terms of benefit etc and that's maybe where it differs from like eros love and because it's not i guess it's still an unselfishness but eventually that will be quelled if you feel undervalued you can be loving and sacrificial and you know more highly regarding the other person's care and yet if it, that's why it's supposed to be reciprocal and that's why unrequited love is like a, a hot topic when it comes to poets and uh, you know dramatists so i think i'm going to stop like there really i think that's what i think about true love and actually i'm not going to stop there excuse me <laughs> what i'm going to do is read to you uh about love very quickly and then i guess we could end it because it was suggested to me by somebody that i could do some like shorter videos and maybe be more impactful and i was like have you met me <laughs> but i give it a go i give it a go all right i should have this i should have had this first ready let's go for it i always say it's one of my favorites but it is one of my favorites but i have many many favorites so let me just get my preferred translation because the one that always comes up is not my favorite one bit uh but, 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 but. Okey doke. All right. All right. Hold on to your hats. Is everyone ready for the, this revelation of, uh, of loveliness? All right. Let's find it. And in fact, I'm going to click on read full chapter because sometimes we miss out the. Here we go. If I speak with the languages of men and of angels but don't have love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith so as to remove mountains but don't have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my goods to feed the poor and if I give my body to be burned but don't have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient and is kind. Love does not envy. Uh, love does not brag. It is not proud. It doesn't behave itself inappropriately. It doesn't seek its own way. It is not provoked. It takes no account of evil. It doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. Uh, I'm going to skip that. No, no, I'm just going to keep reading. It, it never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will be done away with. Where there are various languages, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it will be done away with. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is complete has come, then that which is partial will be done away with. And I'm going to pause there and say love is not the object of this thing. You know, love is the eternal. 
uh, standard. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I felt as a child, I thought as a child. And now that I, I have become a man, I've put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know him, now I know in part, but then I will know fully, even as I was also fully known. But now faith, hope, and love remain, these three. The greatest of these is love. Boom. 